purpose is lifting Jesus up. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. We have gathered to sing praises to God, to thank him for his grace. We have gathered to confess our sin. The Bible says we say we have no sin, we are liars. We all have sinned, falling short of the glory of God, but the grace of God is sufficient for everybody. And so in worship gathering like this, there's a lot going on. People thanking God, people blessing him, people confessing, people crying, people listening, people hearing God move. And that's what we're here to do. Uh, other Christian communities are gathering right now in Birmingham, in Alabama, in the United States. If you just uh, didn't realize that before you woke up, some people were already praising the Lord. So if you say, I'm too tired to join to praise, God's not missing anything. The people in Kenya started doing it. People in North Korea started doing it. People in, in uh, Japan started doing it. You know, it's just for us to get on that praise train. train. So we are here to worship him. Don't be shy. Don't think about what the other person is saying next to you. If the Lord moves you to clap, clap. If you say stand and raise your hand, do it. If you say, you know, just, just, just make sure we're worshiping, you know, in, in an orderly fashion. But feel free. We want freedom to worship Jesus. Freedom to worship Jesus. Freedom to worship Jesus, I say. If the Spirit says stand up and pray, do it. The Spirit says move around, do it. Uh, you know, the Spirit will tell you when to sit so that you won't distract somebody. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord. I want to welcome our Global Faith family. If you're watching right now, those who are watching by Facebook, if you're on, we say we are glad you are here. If you're not, you know, we will join you at some time. But God is good, amen. It's good to see all of you in this visible audience. And I want to say that God is still at work. When we are sleeping, God is working. When we are tired, God is working. Why do I say so? When you get out of this building today, just look right up the hill there. You will see a garden there. You know, they put some seeds in the ground. We left them. You know, they put water there. We left them. And they are growing. And uh, they, 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 they will feed somebody today. God is at work. You better believe it. You, so uh, that's the God we serve. He's the mighty God. He's El Shaddai, Abraham's God. Abraham said, God will provide. So we're here to do that today. So uh, as we get started, I want you to join me to pray. Like I said, we have been refounded in our midst. We have people who are sick. We have people who, you know, just have physical issues. They may not be telling you. They're not complaining, but it's there. So pray, you know, if you look at somebody in the congregation and the spirit say, whisper a prayer. That means God knows what's going on with that person. Whisper a prayer because God has a purpose. Let's pray for our national leadership, pray for our schools, pray for the universities where all these demonstrations are going on. There's a reason why. I pray that God will help us to understand why these things are happening so that we will know how to minister. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. We bless you. We've come to honor you, God come to hear from you. We've come to give a portion of our day and our week as an offering. As an offering. Before we go back, Lord, to go take care of our business, clean our homes, go to job, go make money, God, we say, yeah, we are. We confess that you are great. You are awesome. You are the creator. You are the Alpha and the Omega, God. We, without you, we are nothing. God, we come to confess our sins. Even now, things that we may not tell anyone or anybody know about, God, but you know, have mercy on us. Touch, cleanse us. Our lips, our minds, our eyes. <clears throat> mercy, oh God. We dedicate this service to you. Use everything, every word, every sound, every look, God. Please take control today. We pray for President Biden. Even as he goes to more house, he travels, protecting God. You be in the midst of it, Lord, where brothers and sisters and family can disagree, but focus on the main thing. Bless our congregation. Help us to be evangelistic. Teach us to share our faith. 
teach us, God, to remember the stranger next door because we were once strangers. We bless you. We love you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. We say, Jesus, have your way. Let's give Jesus a praise in the house. Yeah. If you believe God woke you up this morning, give him some praise. Before we get started, the praise will come and lead us. They are leading us. Let's worship along with them. Amen. God bless. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you ready to continue this praise and worship unto the Lord? Amen. As many as can, let's stand to our feet and let's bless his name. Uh, we're talking about evangelism this month, amen, and God has given us light, and this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, hallelujah, let's minister to the Lord these songs, and Lord, just continue to have your way in this place, ah, yes, Lord. God, you've given us light, Lord God. Even as Moses stood before you, Lord God, in your presence, Lord God, there was a glow that was upon him. You said you would cause us to shine, Lord God. You said you would cause us to shine like the stars, that we may be light to the lost. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
just lift your hands in his presence. Sometimes we just need to sit down and be still and know how much he loves us. We love you, Lord, with the love that you loved us with. My beloved is mine, and I am my beloved's. Oh, God, we thank you. We bless you, Lord, for what you have poured into our hearts. You allow us to pour the same love. Sometimes it's by a hug. Sometimes it's by a handshake, a phone call. Sometimes it's just the words we say, Lord God. Sometimes it's just our quietness and listening. But we thank you for this love that you've given to us. Can we just for a moment or two, amen, let's just greet our neighbor. Let's uh, invite, let's hug a neck, shake a hand. But praise God, let's share this love that God has given to us. By this shall all men know you are my disciples. It's that you have loved one for another. Hallelujah. Come on, let's mingle for a while. Praise the Lord. us all as we are fellowshipping just want to um, uh, share with our global faith family that um, vacation bible school is on the way soon so for those of you who live right near us in the community go to the website and check that out also pray for us we are working on we are working on um, uh, adjusting our time of worship from nine o'clock to um uh, mid-morning, maybe 10 o'clock, 10.30. Don't hold me to that until we make a final decision. But we are doing that in order to give other people an opportunity to come. Even without those people, we are still worshiping Jesus. But we are making room for those who want to come 10 o'clock or 10.30 and say, you know, I want to be a part of Bruce Road Community Church and what the Lord is doing here. We want to, to uh, make that available to you. So keep us in your prayers. Uh, today also we are having our, uh, our first mission team meeting, you know, for those who are going to Liberia in uh, January 2025. The meeting is via Zoom, 4 p.m. today. So come on. And also we are having Pat Luck. Today, Pat Luck celebrating birthdays. Uh, people who were born in uh, April, May, June, yeah, April, May, and June. So we are celebrating all those people today, but we are having Pat Luck. And of course, uh, if it's not too late for you to come, come on. Jump, jump in the car. Come join us. We're having lunch right after worship service, all right? And so uh, after this, uh, we're going to have our scripture reading by our young uh, missionary uh, um, who's back uh, from school, Alabama a and He's on vacation. We did some mission work yesterday. Josh, Josh, your brother next. Come on, Josh. Come share with us uh, the word of God from the scripture this morning. accept man's testimony but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God which he has given about his son and this is the testimony God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life.
God says that we ought to bless and not curse. Amen. So we want to bless the congregation. Hallelujah. Let us bless our Lord. Amen. Children. 
your name. in God, we have a God that goes before us. Before we even think about going, he has already made those steps and he has already gone and prepared them. My Lord, for a thousand generations, not just for a couple of generations, the God that we serve, he's, he's a thousand generation kind of God. He's not just a monetary God, he, he's one of those gods that Gracious Father, Lord, I just say thank you. I thank you for last night lying down. I thank you, dear Lord, that you allowed me to live and witness one more day. Thank you for the clean water and food. Thank you that you have placed BRCC on our hearts and our minds to attend worship service this morning. Heavenly Father, we pray for all the church doors that's open this morning in your name. We pray, Master, for all the ministers and pastors that are going to stand and preach your word, Lord. Open our ears, dear Lord, that we may receive your word. Not only that we may receive it, Lord, but we may be able to go out and allow it to resonate on our hearts and minds, dear Lord. And we may be able to share your word to those who have not yet received you as their Lord and Savior. Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Giving honor to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. Pastor Gibson, I thank you, sir, for the opportunity to be able to stand in your presence today. To all of my preached brothers and sisters, to our Global Faith family, to all of our visitors, to all our members, I greet you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's good for you to see me today. It's good for me to see you today. Because when we see each other, that means God has blessed us to see another day. It's good that we were able to walk in the sanctuary one more time because the next time we come in here, we may be on our backs being rolled in here. And God has blessed us to see this day. Thank you, Brother Josh Ronex, for reading the scripture for us today. It's good to see young men working in the church. And it's a testimony to the parents that they have trained up the child in the way that they should go. And when they get older, according to the scripture, they will not depart from it. We are still, uh, this month, ministering uh, of evangelism. And we will carry that on today. Uh, evangelism. God said, Jesus said in Matthew 28, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to, to obey all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Lo, and I will be with you always, even unto the end of the world. The Great Commission. God have already preordained for Christian people. It didn't say pastor go out. It didn't say ministers go out. It was talking to all Christians. The moment we have received Christ Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, it's up to each and every one of us to spread the gospel to evangelize, to go out to tell someone about the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ. Evangelism, as defined in the, in, uh, the dictionary, 
is the spreading of the Christian gospel. The Christian gospel. See, there are many gospels out there, but there's only one Christian gospel. It's just like there's many gods. The Bible says there are many gods, but there's only one Jehovah God. To spread the gospel of the Christian gospel by public preaching and personal witnessing. See, that's where we come in at. That's, that's where those uh, 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 who are not ministers come in at of uh, personal witnessing. Preaching the gospel. What's the gospel? Someone may be wondering, well, what's the gospel? The gospel is the good news. It's the good news. The good news about what? About the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior. That's what we are to teach and preach to everybody. You know, let me share this story with you. Those who don't know, I am a truck driver. And as truck drivers, we are, <laughs> we can be a little impatient. Yeah. A little bit. Just a little bit. At times, Burt Reynolds put out a movie, um, The Bandits. And in there, the, the, uh, the guy was driving the truck. He said, we got a long way to go and a short time to get there. That's what drivers do. We, we, we got a long way to go. We long haul. We got, we got a long way to go, but they wanted it there yesterday. So sometimes, y'all four-wheeler drivers, y'all sometimes slow us up. And by us being a little bit impatient, we sometimes get on the horn. Boom, hey, move out the way. Hey, right, yeah, slow down. Hey, move. We just, I got somewhere I need to be at. I got an appointment time I'm trying to meet. Within that, we learn that we can share our faith through God. The good news of the death, burial, and the resurrection, the gospel, is all of our responsibility. And someone may be saying, well, I don't know exactly how to go about sharing the gospel. I don't know exactly how, who do I talk to about evangelism? How do I evangelize? The first step is prayer. It's to ask God, Lord, here I am. I want to do your will, Lord, but I, I, I just don't know exactly how to go about it. I hear over at Brewster Road Community Church that, they, 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 they want to go out and evangelize, and, and, and I want to join them, Lord, but I don't really have the patience, the nerves to go about it. How do I do it? When we pray to God, God will answer our prayer. We see here in 1 John that John, John, John was speaking of just this. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. He that believeth on the son of God has witness himself. He that believeth not God has made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave unto his son. When we read and study the Bible, the Bible teaches us to study to show their self approval unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly divining the truth. If when we study, see this, this, this word just doesn't pop in our head. It's just like when we was in school. Uh, 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 algebra just didn't pop into our heads. And a matter of fact, it still ain't popped in mind. I've been out a long time. And I'm still waiting on that algebra just to pop up in there. But see, it doesn't work like that, does it? Learning a foreign language just doesn't pop into your head. You have to open it up and read and study. Well, the Bible is the same way. If we are on to learn the word of God, we have to open up the book. 
and read. But before we read, we pray. And we ask God, Lord, I don't understand all these these and I's and that. I don't even understand all the, the, the new uh, international version of it, Lord. But, Master, I know you know, and I'm asking you as a child of God for you to reveal these words unto me. Not that I can walk around with the big head saying that I know the word, but first of all, that I may learn of you, I may learn of your commandments, that I may be able to apply what I have learned to myself. And once I have learned for myself, once God has equipped me, now I'm able to share the good news. I'm able to go out into the streets and tell someone about Jesus. After I have studied the word, because let me, let, me, let me say this. I have gone out in Jefferson County, in Birmingham, knocking on doors, not knowing who's behind that door, what's going to come out that door. I have encountered drug addicts in the process. I have spoken with intoxicated people in the process. I have spoken to what some classify as the thuggish people in the process. And let me tell you something about the thuggish people <laughs> that we call thugs. Just because we view them as a thug, that don't mean they don't know the Bible. Don't, 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 don't get fooled. That's why the book says, study to show their self approved because I have spoken to those guys and ladies. Thinking, thinking that I'm going to tell them something they don't know. And walk away like, wow. He knew more about the Bible than I knew. She knew more about, she was telling me about stuff. I had to, wait a minute, hold on, now where is that? Prejudging people. We don't, we, that's why you shouldn't judge anyone. Because you don't know their circumstances. You don't know what he or she have gone through. Uh, Grandma, I, what are you talking about? I, I, I know you see me with this can of beer in my hand right now, but, and I know I'm wrong. Uh, I know I'm not right, but when I was little, Grandma had me, oh yeah. We was in church every Sunday. We was at uh, Bible study. We did all those things. I just, just not quite there yet. Evangelizing. Going out. Teaching. Preparing ourselves for that mission that God has given unto us. Understanding that there are some lost people out there. There are lost souls out there. What good does it do for me to know God, knowing that I have eternal life, knowing that my name is written in the Lamb Book of Life, but I do nothing to share it with you? What, 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 what good does it do for me to go to college or get a trade or learn a skill and, and I become successful in life, but I see my sister and my brother down and I won't reach down to bring them up to where I am. And not only where I am, but I'm bold enough to want to lift you up higher than where I am because to me, I'm still down low. That's the way Christianity is supposed to be. We are to reach down to those, not thinking that we're more than they, but we want to bring them up at least to our level, if not elevate them even, even higher. Uh, there are some who get theirs. I got mine. Uh, nobody gave me anything. I got mine the hard way. And there's nothing wrong with getting things in life the hard way. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem comes in when we don't want to help our neighbors. We walking around with our noses all up in the air. And have the audacity to only want to share Jesus who saved our soul. And not only that, because what did, I'm going to make it personal about me. What did I do? I'm not talking about y'all. 
Okay, what are you talking about me? What did Cyrus Jerome Pickett Sr. do that warned God who created the heavens and the earth, who placed the animals here, the vegetations here, who, 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 who created man from the dust of the ground, who took a bone out of Adam and put a man created a woman. But yet and still, little old me, who's not even deserving, but God loves little old country me. Yeah, a little nappy head boy from Belmont, Alabama. Don't worry about where it's at. No, 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 don't, don't, even, don't even ask me. I'm not, don't, even, don't even worry about all that. That's not even important. Because if you blink going to Huntsville, you're going to miss it. But, 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 but God saw a need to save little old. And if he saw a need to save little old me, then he also has seen a need to save you as well. Not only everyone in this room, but all over. All over the world, from, from this continent to that continent and the next continent. That's the God that we serve. All knowing God, sharing our faith, uh, evangelism, evangelizing to, to those. Uh, well, well, what do we tell them? Glad you asked. It's simple. It's not rocket science. It's not. Let me ask you a question. And I want you to listen. And answer it to yourself. Have you, now Christianity is an individual thing, isn't it? We have to personalize this thing. When I say you, I'm talking about I, we, us. Have you, me, have we come to a place in our spiritual life that you know for certain that if you were to die today, that you're going to heaven? Or would you say that's something I'm still working on. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me ask that question again. Have you come to a place in your spiritual life that you know for certain that if you were to die today that you were going to heaven? Or is that something you would say, well, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm still working on. Give you something about that. Well, let me, let, me, let me ask you another question. And this is hypothetically speaking, okay, because I wish no ill on anyone. But just suppose, suppose you were to die today, okay? Suppose you were to die today. And you stood, as they say, in front of the pearly gates. And God were to ask you, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say to God? Hypothetically speaking now. Suppose you were to die today. Now somebody did die today. Somebody dying right now. Suppose you were. We all got that day. Suppose you were to die today. And you were to ask God. I mean, you stood before God and God asked you, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say to God? The Lord. tried to do right. I think I lived a good life. I, I, I gave to the homeless. I, I was faithful to my husband, to my wife. I was dedicated to my family and to my kids. I, I, I fed the poor on Christmas Eve and Thanksgiving dinners. You know, uh, when people knocked on the door. I didn't always shut the door in their face. I tried. I tried. But see, that's not how we get to heaven, is it? We don't get to heaven by works. Works don't get us there. You can work all you want to work. You can work till you turn blue. Doing good deeds does not get you into heaven. There are, there are, there are uh, uh, some who would say hey, Adolf Hitler did good, and he did to the ones that followed him. We can say Donald Trump did good, and he does for the ones that follow him. But then there are other good works because we never can work enough. 
There's not enough daylight. There's not enough night. There's not enough hours in the day to do God's will, to do God's work into that. The Bible teaches us, for by grace are you saved, through faith. Not that of yourself, not of works, lest what any man should. See, if I can work to get there, there wouldn't be no need for me to come up in here. What am I going to be up in here for? If, if, if I can work to get there, there wouldn't be no need for me to always try to do right, would it? What am I going to do right for? I know I'm going up in there. For by grace. Am I saved through faith, not of works, lest it, I would boast, oh, pastor, I'll be boasting. Hey, I, I'm going up in there. I don't know about you. I don't know about you or you or you. I, I worked hard enough. I did everything I can. I, I, I'm going to be up here in that mud. I'm going to be looking down and saying, hey, y'all should have been coming on with me. Y'all should have been rolling with me, dog. You should have been rolling with me. I tried to get you to come. See, I would be boasting and bragging, wouldn't I? I would. Oh, trust me. <laughs> trust me. I'll be bragging. I mean, I'm not a bragger now, but if I, can, if, I can, if I can work to go down, oh, Lord knows. <laughs> you come out of somebody with a big old head. Oh, my goodness. I wouldn't be able to fit through that door. I'll be coming up in that mud. But that's not how, that's not how it works. The Bible said, as Josh read, these things have I written so that you may know you have eternal life. See, once you know, you don't brag about it, you tell about it. I like that. Just, that just popped up. You don't brag about it, you tell about it. Ooh, what I'm telling, I'm telling about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. That's what evangelizing means, spreading the gospel. Well, how do you spread it? What are you saying? You're talking about, first of all, what's the main purpose of Christianity, of Christ coming, of evangelism? Save those from what? Sin, amen. The whole purpose of Christianity, of Jesus, of believing in the death, the burial, and the resurrection, the whole purpose of God sending his only begotten son into this world. The only purpose, the sole purpose, was to redeem man from his sin. To pay the perpetuation for our sins. To, to, to clean, clean us up from all. Um, well, what is sin? Sin is anything that's not pleasing unto God. Let me, let me, say, that, let me say that again. Sin is anything that's not pleasing unto God. The average person, when they think about sin, they think about lying, stealing, killing those Ten Commandments that we learn. But what about your bad thoughts? <laughs> Told you I was a truck driver, didn't I? What about when y'all uh, cut me off and I'm trying to get, you see me up there first. And here you come trying to squeeze right in the middle. Well, y'all laughing, y'all been there, they. Uh huh. See what kind of cars y'all driving. Right now, it's a license plate today, dog. Get you down. Yeah, I got something for you. But anyway, <laughs> y'all made me lose my thought. <laughs> sin, sin. That sin. About the line is stealing. Those bad thoughts. Don't worry about that. Thank you. Bad. Those bad thoughts. What about? Gluttony. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. Yeah, see, I know about it too. Somebody like, shut up. No, I, I got something I'm trying to lose. So right now I'm just sucking it in. If I was to exhale, y'all would just blow out this room. Overeating is a sin too, but we don't want to say that part, is it? You know, it's just like in our judi American judicial system, man classifies sin or oh, it's classified. Uh, 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 we classify crime. Oh, that's just a little misdemeanor. Now, I just ran a stop sign. That's a little misdemeanor. Oh, that's felony one. Uh, 
you know, we, 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 we classify those things. Oh, I just, I just told a little white lie. That little white lie. That little white lie separates you from the love of God. That little white lie is what caused Adam and Eve being kicked out the garden. That little bitty lie, that little thing that you think is not that bad in the eyes of God, it, for, 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 for when you have broken the least of my commandments, when you have broken the least of the commandments, we have what? We have broken them all. So we evangelize and we teach them about the need of God because of sin. Then after that, we teach them to what? Repent. Acknowledge that we are a sinner who deserve God's judgment and wants to turn away from our ways and submit to God's will. In other words, it's like making a U-turn. Turning around from where you are. Going down Vessel and Super Highway. And lo and behold, you realize you, you're going south and you want to be going north. So you what? You, 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 the way y'all do it, y'all just turn around and go and go. But you're supposed to go to the next exit or get off and turn around. But, but anyway, y'all, I keep telling them a truck driver. But. Making that 180 degree turnaround. Don't do a 360 because then you're going to be right back where you started. It's a 180. Repent. Acknowledging that you are a sinner. Evangelism should be a way of life. It should be a lifestyle. We shouldn't worry with it of, of uh, not wanting to do it. Because it should be a lifestyle. And where does it start? It's just like anything else. It starts where? At home. Everybody in this room got somebody in their family. That can use some Jesus. Everybody in this room got a family member, a cousin, somewhere down the line that you know for a fact that they're not living the life that's pleasing unto God. Now, we're not to judge those people because just because we see them doing wrong doesn't mean they don't have Christ in their life now. But we all, what, have fallen short, ain't we? But they're still to share it with them. Have you come to a place in your life that you know for certain that it, you would not? This is what we tell them. Then we share with them how we got to know Christ. We weren't born a Christian. I tell you all the time, I came to church without chasing skirts. That's, that's the God knows truth, and I share it everywhere I go because that's how I became the church. I wasn't looking for God. No. Not at all. That was nowhere. No. That's not, you know, and I, and I have uh, been around some pastors who say if, if you, if your mind not here, then you might as well be at home. No. Come on in. God going to work on your heart. God has a way of working on your mind. God has a way of changing from what your attitude is to where he would have your attitude to be. Come on in. Come on in. I heard this other minister that I went to Bible college with, and he's a pastor. And he was a pastor then as well. And I remember, I'll never forget, I'll never forget, it was during the revival at the church, and, and, and he, he came to do the revival at the church, and, and he said, he said, he said, uh, people want us to expand the church, Pastor Gibson. He said, people, the members coming, and, you know, we're a small congregation, and they want uh, to expand the church. Well, who are we going to let in here? You know, I don't know thieves in the church. I don't want no whores in the church, no prostitutes, no liars. Yeah. Well, my dear wife, well, who you want in the church? <laughs> I mean, uh, Jesus himself said he had a need to go through Samaria. Yeah. He had a need to talk to the, the lady at the woman at the well. He had a need to do all those things. He had a need to cast those demons out. Who do you want? I said to myself, Lord, first of all, I don't want to be a pastor. I don't desire it. 
I don't, I don't desire the office of the bishop. Let's put it out there. I'm not saying I would never be a pastor, but I personally do not desire the office of the bishop. I'm not there yet. I'm st- he's still working on me. I'm not there yet. Y'all pray for me. I'm not there yet. But I said, Lord, if, 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 if I was the pastor, all I would want to do is open the doors up for the, for the alcoholics. All I would want to do is open the doors up for the drug dealers. I want the whole congregation to be filled with sick people. Sick people that I can preach to, that I can tell the word of God to, and let God do the changing in their heart. See, we do not change hearts. We preach the word. We tell what thus said the Lord. God does. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. Jesus does the drawing. We do the sharing of the gospel, the presentation. We share the word of God. We teach about the death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus said, no, I stand at the door and knock. The doors of the church are open. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come and sup with him and he with me. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes to the Father Except by me. We carry the gospel out. We evangelize to those who are sick. Jesus came through for 42 generations. He saw a need. He said that there's somebody in 2024, the doors of the church is open, that's going to be at Brewster Road Community Church. One day they're going to need a God, a living God on their side. And I'm going to dispatch my beloved son, not only to Brewster Road, but to every church that's open in God's name. The death, the burial, and the resurrection is what we preach, what we teach. And most importantly, it should be how we live. Not that we think we're more than others. No, 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 no. God loves the whole world and everyone therein. But it's our responsibility as Christians to to share about God's, about Jesus' death on the cross. How he lived 32 years a sinless life. And how his own people betrayed him. The Bible said they took it from judgment hall to judgment hall, trying, trying to find guilt. But Pastor Pastor, he said, I see no fault in this man. No, 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 no. If y'all want him, y'all choose who you want. The Bible said they beat that man all night long. Had him to carry his own rugged cross to his burial site, to his death site. Yes, Lord. The Bible said they even had the nerve to nail him between two thieves, the one on the left and the one on the right. The Bible teaches us that while he was on his deathbed, he had a conversation with the two thieves. One of the thieves said, if you be the son of God, like you claim you are, would you come off this cross? And save yourself. And where are you at? And won't you save us too? The Bible also said the other guy on the cross said, This man has done no wrong. We are getting what we deserve. The Bible said he turned to Jesus and said, uh, Remember me when thou get into thy father's house. And I love this part. I love this part right here. Because unlike man, Unlike man, Jesus said this day, this day, Jesus didn't say, hold up, you came a little short, dude. If you had got me yesterday, I would have had to take you down in the water and baptize you. I'm sorry, but you, you, you messed up just about, you missed out about a day. Man would have said that, dude, you just messed up, man, you missed it. The sale is over with. But Jesus said this day, Thou shalt be with me in paradise in my father's house. The Bible said then he 
Jesus, G, G, Jesus, put his, hung his head in the lock of the shoulder and gave up the ghost, meaning he died. But then the Bible teaches us that on the third day, <laughs> that's the gospel right there, on the third day, see, he didn't just die and that was the end of the story. If he had just died and that would have been the end of the story, then he would have been just like any other person who died. But the Bible said, but on that third day, the father got him up out the grave. Got him up. All power was given unto him. And the Bible said in Acts that he, he ascended into heaven where he sits at the right hand of the father, advocating on our behalf. The doors of the church are open. We're going to be warned to come today. You cannot say you haven't heard the gospel preached. It's up to each and every individual to respond to the gospel as being presented unto you. We'll be one today. Oh, don't leave out of here if you know you don't have Jesus as your Lord and Savior because tomorrow is not promised to you. See, if you knew you would live to see tomorrow or if you would live to see next Sunday, I don't say, well, we'll see you next Sunday. But no, no, it's not promised to me. It's not promised to you neither. Will there be one? Will there be one? Will there be one? God bless you. May God keep you. It's our prayer. Gracious Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the word that was preached, Heavenly Father. Lord, I hope and pray that it will resonate on someone's heart. That someone will realize that the doors of the church are still open and they never close them. That it, they still have time to confess their sins. Heavenly Father, bless this communion, Lord. We thank you for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. Thank you for the shed blood that you did on Calvary. Forgive us of our sins and all our wrongdoing. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I was here with us that Jesus Christ, the same day he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do you in remembrance of me. So here we have the bread. Let us take and let us eat. And after the same manner, he took the cup. And when he had supped, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you drink it as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us all drink together. The Bible says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, you do so forth the Lord's death until he return. God bless you, and may God keep you is our prayer. <coughs> These are our uh, weekly announcements. For Ways to Give, there are sheets of paper labeled Ways to Give in the back of the pews and on the back table containing QR codes you can scan with your phone's camera. We have volunteers needed. BRCC's culinary and prayer and care teams are in need of volunteers. If you would be interested in serving in either of these ministries, please contact the church office at office manager at brccbham.info. VBS will begin on June Wednesday the 26th and end on Sunday, June the 30th. We are in need of volunteers. Please see Sister Stephania Wiley or Allison Smith if you are interested in volunteering. Our night of worship this quarter will be a lock-in. Please join us on Friday, June the 7th, to seek the Lord's face together as his unified body. You don't want to miss it. Ministry leaders will be contacting you to participate. Due to the final weekend in May being Memorial Day weekend, our monthly fast will begin June 2nd and end on June the 8th with the closing of our night of worship. Today we will have our second quarter potluck celebrating birthdays occurring in April, May, and June. Pastor has contacted many of you regarding our service time changing. Please be present on June 14th to place a vote on whether you would like the time change to 10 a.m or 10.30 a.m. Join us this Wednesday for Bible study. Doors open at 6.15, prayer starts at 6.30, and Bible study begins at 6.45. At this time, we want to wish all of you who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this month a very happy birthday and happy anniversary. May God bless you with many more. If this is your first time at BRCC, please connect with us. Our greeters have visitors cards that you can fill out. You can also click on the connect with BRCC QR code on the ways to give sheet to tell us more about yourself. Remember, BRCC is a place where you matter. <laughs> <laughs> 